All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sotko here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a whole bunch of good crypto news stuff for you today. First thing I want to start off with is that Cryptopia has been hacked and significant losses have been reported. So this isn't entirely surprising to me. I figured Cryptopia would be hacked one of these days here. Kind of like just about any exchange is probably going to be hacked at some point. But Cryptopia is kind of known as... Eh, one of the lesser exchanges the one good thing about cryptopia is that they have tons of altcoins and usually have the coin listed that you have that uh, you know some of the bigger exchanges don't so if you receive some kind of weird coin usually it's on cryptopia and you can cash it out for bitcoin or something like that but other than that it's a pretty uh, you know, easy to log in, uh, barely any 2FA, uh, you know, withdrawal limits apparently uh, don't uh, apply to hackers. Uh, so, yeah. So let's uh, check this out. New Zealand-based cryptocurrency exchange. Cryptopia suffered a security breach and is ongoing through unscheduled maintenance. We're doing unscheduled maintenance. It's not a hack, guys. It's unscheduled maintenance. The announcement was just posted on the exchange's official Twitter page outlining that the losses have been significant, whatever that means. We apologize for the delay in keeping you updated and appreciate your patience. Your patience with just losing all your cryptocurrency, probably. Fortunately, I had nothing on there. I never keep anything on Cryptopia. Um, I, the only reason I've ever used Cryptopia is to just, again, just use some kind of random altcoin, put it on there, exchange it for Bitcoin, and then get that off there real quick. Because as soon as you go, just next, when, whenever Cryptopia is up, do yourself a favor, just log into Cryptopia. Uh, don't put anything on there, obviously but uh, take a look at it you'll see what I mean it's kind of one of those exchanges that you go hmm this doesn't um this doesn't feel safe you know funds are not safe who here so yesterday the 14th January 2019 the cryptocurrency exchange suffered a security breach which resulted in significant losses once identified by staff the exchange was put into maintenance while we assess the damages was unscheduled maintenance I love that I always love it uh, so the announcement didn't specify the amount of damages. However, 43 hours ago, an Ethereum transaction took place seeing 19,390 Ethereum moving out of Cryptopia's tagged wallet to an unknown address, uh, which was about $2.5 million in uh, Ethereum. It's worth noting that the first official tweet on the exchange's Twitter profile regarded the maintenance from January 13th. Um, saying, uh, we are currently experiencing unscheduled maintenance. We are working to resume the service as soon as possible and we'll keep you updated. That was two days ago in the first exchange hacked. So that was two days ago, 43 hours ago, the Ethereum transaction took place. So about two days ago. So that's when it actually occurred. Uh, Cryptopia becomes the first cryptocurrency to be hacked in 2019. Well, the current exchange to be hacked in 2019. This has quickly been picked up by cryptocurrency community. Uh, so Whale Panda added, uh, it's somewhat interesting that the attack took place during a bear market where small exchanges struggle to stay afloat, hinting that the possibility of an inside job cannot be ruled out. Now, uh, I don't know about that, Whale Panda. I don't know about that. Uh, everybody says that nice hash, uh, when, when nice hash was hacked, uh, it was an inside job, uh, supposedly. Uh, that's what everybody says and alleges. Uh, Mt. Gox, inside job. Uh, basically, any hack that takes place, people just instantly say inside job. Now, are all of them not inside jobs? Probably not. Some of them, eh, maybe. But uh, I think to just like instantly hit that possibility, yeah, sure, the pos that's the possibility, but also the possibility of a meteorite hitting Earth and destroying us all in the next three seconds. Nope, guess that wasn't a possibility. Uh, you know, uh, the same is that my door is going to get kicked open because I got squatted also didn't happen so like the possibility for anything to happen and like right now um is a thing but uh, uh inside job not sure about that i don't think uh, cryptopia would have any reasoning to do that uh they certainly make probably at least a reasonable amount of money with their fees again it's not the biggest exchange but you know all exchanges have fees so it can pay the staff i get it uh but why they would just take out 2.5 million like that and potentially uh you know potentially you know i don't know the wording basically be criminals and it's just all gonna come back on them if they did that i just i just doubt it i don't think so in this so this is cryptopia's twitter and you can see that on january 13th we are experiencing an unscheduled maintenance oh god that's not good we are working to resume services as soon as possible let's take a look at some of the comments hey 
Get, get a better muffler. Guy needs a better muffler. Or a better car. Uh, can I? When can I withdraw my Tron? Hang on, I got... Uh, uh, this is on the 14th. Uh, I got mine last night after 20 days of processing status. So, like, it looks like everybody's had some hard times with this, but... Um, um, are you, aren't you concerned reading all these replies? We hear you and our team is working on it. We are sorry to hear how much inconvenience this is causing you. Resuming trading is our number one priority. And we have, we have a quickly, we have a highly experienced and extensive team. Apparently not that highly experienced and highly extensive, uh, dedicated to resolving this as quickly as possible. So they're not, so this is on the, the, like 20 hours ago before they really even announced that this was a hack. And so people are like wondering, Hey, what is this? What is this exit scam? Is this a hack? You know? And they're just like, Oh no, it's, it's just maintenance. And then on the 14th, we're still experiencing unscheduled maintenance, right? So, uh, yeah, I don't know about that. And then an update we're experiencing. We are still experiencing unscheduled maintenance right after that as well. So we got we got two of them on the 14th. And then finally, it's like, all right, we need to tell everybody. So this is the way the MO goes with exchanges, uh, mining pools, whatever, with nice hash and et cetera, that um, it's it's – we're experiencing unscheduled maintenance for about a day and then finally they tell you so this is kind of why everybody freaks out whenever an exchange or whatever service is like hey we're down for maintenance right now and everyone's like oh exit scam they got hacked right off the bat and there's kind of good reason for that because they keep using this unscheduled maintenance why don't you just tell everybody right off the bat just tell everybody right off the bat um because like you're you know you're your engineers come up and say, hey, we're missing like 20,000. We're, we're missing like $3 million worth of cryptocurrency here. It's pretty significant. It's not unscheduled maintenance at that point. You, it's, it's not like, hey, I wonder what's going on here. Maybe take a few minutes to figure it out. Oh, maybe maybe there's just something wrong with the wallets and we're not seeing it or something. Or maybe maybe something went down. We'll check it out. It, this is an unscheduled maintenance at this point. You know, like within like 10 minutes, hey, like everything's been stolen, right? There's, a tr there's literally a transaction of it all going out. So then they say, uh, we apologize for the delay, keeping you updated, appreciate your patience. Yesterday, 14th of January, which I would say it was more like the 13th of January, because that is the day that they started this unscheduled maintenance, and, to, and uh, about 43 hours ago, uh, $2.5 million left your exchange. So I'd say that's I'd say that's a lie right there. The crypt Why they would say that, who knows, but... Uh, exchange suffered a security breach, which resulted in significant losses. Uh, staff then notified and involved the appropriate government agencies. So, yes, this is definitely a hack. If you have to call the police and government agencies and high-tech crime unit who are jointly and actively investigating the matter as a major crime. A major crime, yes. So, um, the idea with this uh, uh, nearly 20,000 Ethereum moving out. I would say that's a major crime. I mean, that's that's millions of dollars at this point. This isn't like, oh, somebody took, you know, your wallet uh, kind of deals. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be exchanged, uh, you know, investigated uh, pretty, pretty highly, I would suppose. Uh, are you going to get your crypto back? Nobody ever does. Let's just say Nice Hash, I think, is still paying everybody back like 10 percent every like, what was it, like a couple months or something like that. So I don't think everybody's been paid back from that. Uh, most exchanges just end up offering you something goofy, like they like they make an exchange coin and they give you that so that you can continue uh, trading. Uh, most of the time, it's just total nonsense. They'll just make up a coin that you're supposed to receive that somebody is supposed to get for their Bitcoin. So they're basically going to, you know, if like you make a trade, that's basically somebody giving up their actual valuable Bitcoin for their made up crypto exchange coin uh, because they got hacked and they need to pay you back, but they don't have any Ethereum or Bitcoin and they don't want to give you their money right what that'd be crazy i don't want to give you my money so let's just make up a token and give it to them so i'm assuming that's what they're going to do uh, i'm calling that one now there's going to be a cryptopia token and you're going to get you know if you lost like ten thousand bucks they'll give you ten thousand dollars or probably not even that more like a thousand bucks in some goofy cryptopia token they're going to be like sorry sorry guys you know and you're going to trade that for like somebody's actual valuable um Bitcoin, which nobody's going to want to do. Uh, we are unable to uh, update anyone at the moment as it's now a police matter. Please keep an eye on our social channels for updates on this. That's literally just a tweet that just happened now. Look, seven, sec seven seconds ago, that literally just happened. Let me go ahead and... Uh, unable to update anyone, but check our channels for updates. Hmm. Makes sense. Makes sense. So if you're unable to update anyone, 
because the police matter. You should check our social media channels, which I'm on. I'm on their Twitter. I'm I'm on your Twitter, and keep an eye on our social channels for updates. Oh, oh God, oh God, I got a headache. Oh man, it hurts my brain. The crypto world. Anyway, guys, so another brain hurting thing here is uh, uh, CZ Binance. This this is from, um, you know, good old CZ at Binance. He says, store your coins yourself. All right. You fight hackers yourself and guard from losing wallet yourself. Nice grammar. Uh, computer, uh, Computer breaks, USBs get lost. Store on an exchange, use only the most reputable, proven, secure exchanges. Or move to DEX and disrupt ourselves. Funds your Seifu on Binance. So basically, he said, store your coins yourself, but the problem is, is that your computer will break or your USB gets lost. Then says, store them on an exchange. Which one is it, CZ? St- store them on Binance or store them yourself? Apples and oranges, my friend. Two different things. That tweet made no sense. Uh, get up out of here, CZ, and ch- check your logic. Store your coins yourself, but they can get lost. So store them on an exchange. What? Anyway, moving on. So the story, uh, the main story I had yesterday was uh, Russia is allegedly planning on investing $10 billion into Bitcoin because of their sanctions, and they have a whole bunch of money. Every country has a bunch of U.S. dollar in, in reserves, probably. Um and that they're thinking, hey, we're just going to invest this in Bitcoin, and that way we can get around the sanctions. So the news that Russia will be investing an enormous amount, $10 billion, to purchase Bitcoin has been circulating, and the alleged uh, is probably probably fake news. Uh, and that's kind of why I second-guessed it yesterday. I was like, do you guys even think this is real? What do you guys think about it? And most people commented back, fake news, uh, which I kind of agree. But uh, with numerous news articles coming out about it, Mm, could be, but ten billion—that's a lot. That would rocket the price of of, of Bitcoin something fierce. Um, so, an economist who claimed to be working at the Presidential Academy of National Economy and Public Administration, the Ranapa, oh man, that's an intense, that's an intense one. Poster uh, multiple time posted multiple times on Twitter, stating that the country he is working for showed signs of possibly investing in crypto. Um, however, the, the, this news article was only cited from Ginkgo's tweets, uh, and it came from the Daily Hoddle, uh, which has a reputation of publishing fake news. Um, so the only reason why I read this article was because there was a lot of articles before this about um, Jihan Wu, the CEO of Bitmain, stepping down. And everyone's like, no, it's not happening, it's not happening, it's fake news, it's fake news, it's fake news. Then finally an article comes out, Jihan Wu is stepping down, he's going to be a co-chair, somebody else is going to take over his place in, in a different way, so they're kind of going to be co-chairs. So, turns out, it kind of was real news. Uh, not in the exact way that the original news worked it but instead they had worked out something different so maybe it was correct then but not so correct now in the sense they're like okay well i won't step down completely or quit i will just be a co-chair like jihan wu says you know i'm gonna be a co-chairman and like we'll all run the company together like i'll step down as ceo though um so that's why i read this is that like you see a lot of these articles talking about how how russia may be investing into bitcoin and a lot of countries are thinking about making national cryptocurrencies hell venezuela did it turkey was thinking about doing it uh there's a lot of articles about russia possibly thinking about doing it maybe in two years um and i'll I'll have that one as well so was this real was this not i don't know if it matters i think the positive news maybe caused a few people to buy into bitcoin who knows but i don't want fake news uh causing people to buy into a particular cryptocurrency However, uh, it could be true that, you know, Russia may be making their own cryptocurrency in some way or that they might want to invest into Bitcoin so they can get around certain things of U.S. sanctions and other other country sanctions. Uh, That totally makes sense. However, uh, I'm sure they have to be aware that if they buy $10 billion in Bitcoin, that's a lot of Bitcoin, right? But they have to be aware that, what is that, like three, eh, let's call it three million Bitcoin. They have to be aware that Bitcoin has such a low transaction rate. So that if they're actually going to spread this out to banks and the people, or if they're just going to use this for governmental purposes to buy uh, to buy supplies or ship things, this, that, or the other thing, 
whatever, um, then the transaction rate is going to be very slow. Uh, you know, if, if mass people are using it, fine. If just one government is using it for various things to get around sanctions, then it's going to be just fine because the transaction rate is going to be fine for that. So I think anybody getting into crypto, especially a, a government like that, uh, would know that Bitcoin is really not the greatest choice to have a massive amount of your people using uh, because it's just going to result in tons of fees and very slow transactions to slow your economy down something fierce. So moving on, with that said, we have another article here. I don't know if it's fake news or not. Russia, a crypto ruble coming within two to three years, government official says. So now they're talking about uh, long under discussion. Russia wants to leverage the benefits of blockchain to provide a digital version of the ruble, which is not too unbelievable. The opinion is that the ruble will not differ any way from the fiat ruble, except it's going to exist on the blockchain. Uh, because, I mean, if you think about it, governments probably would be interested in a digital currency because it would be easier to use. You could just create it. Uh, delete it, uh, inflate it, deflate it. Uh, you could send it here, send it there, take it away from somebody very easily. Kind of almost like what we can do now is just digital currency. Most people don't even carry money on them anymore. Uh, you might have a wallet with, with debit cards or credit cards in it, and y you don't even have money in your wallet. You go you go get something to eat, you just swipe your card. You go buy some clothes, you just swipe your card. You go buy this, you just swipe your card. You, you buy something online, you literally type in the number, and it's at your house. So like, where was the money the whole time? So I think more and more people are just not using money and more and more people are, you know, you still need money uh, when you need to go to the local trap house. But uh, other than that, money is very slow. Uh, it's expensive to make. You have to have people watching over it. You have to have people making it. You have to have people shipping it. You have to have banks taking care of it, them shipping it out, uh, providing loans to people in cash form sometimes. So it's... Um, it makes sense that a, that a government would want that. However, I don't think they would want a fully uh, public blockchain uh, because the you know uh, the missing trillions of dollars in the United States black budget military projects, boy, that wouldn't look so good when we're uh, when we spent three trillion dollars uh, trying to make a flying saucer and it turns out it didn't work so good, right? So we just wasted three mil three trillion dollars of the taxpayers' money and we'll just make them pay the taxes for that. Whoops, right? That can't be on the ledger. You know what I'm saying? That can't be on the ledger. So it's not going to be a public ledger, but digital currencies, it makes sense. Uh, it really does. Um, so is, is Russia going to be the first to do it? Uh, who knows? I mean, Venezuela, you can kind of say they did it first with the Petro. Um, is the Petro even real? Who knows? Nobody buys it. But um, moving on to the next one, there's a fake Pirate Bay movie that installs malware to target crypto users. So there was an infected movie file for... Uh, the Girl in the Spider's Web, which I, I, I've never seen, um, apparently popular enough to be on pop, Pirate Bay. I guess everything's on Pirate Bay anyway. Uh, it contains a shortcut that downloads a payload into the app data folder. Well, the app data folder typically carries your blockchains, uh, you know, you, your wallets typically install to like the roaming app data kind of folder there. Um, that's just typically where like if you install a, a wallet, uh, the blockchain will download to that particular folder, etc. Uh, so according to the evidence provided by Bleeping Computer, when open, the file infects a number of well-known websites, including Google and Wikipedia, and is able to manipulate website searches and displayed content. Kind of sounds like old circa 2006 to 2008 era uh, uh, black screen, black desktop, uh, and you can't get online. You can only go to the website where it, it gives you the antivirus. How convenient, right? You just got a virus and you can't go to any other web page and your screen is black and your computer's all jacked up and slow. And the first thing that opens up with your web browser is the solution to your problem. How convenient. Oh man, I better pull out my debit card and pay $99.99 .99 to repair my computer. And imagine if you were the type of person that doesn't know how to go whoop and turn off your computer and pull out that f disk you know what i mean pull out that windows disk and get get formatting you know what i'm saying because honestly formatting is a lot easier than going through all uh, going through and rooting out every little bit of the virus uh so like old people they'd be like oh i better call this up and give them my credit card and get rid of this virus you know what i mean um so if, if the victim goes to Wikipedia, the malware's injection mechanism inserts a fake donation banner that states Wikipedia now accepts cryptocurrency donations and provides two cryptocurrency address to send to donate to. Eh, that seems a little weak. Uh, you know, why not just man up and get, give a real nasty Trojan and just take everybody's crypto when they open up their wallets and stuff? A donation, a fake donation link? Pfft amateurs right so once i downloaded and i thought i looked weird due to the icon download avi 
uh, threw it uh, in a hex editor, and oh, there was some kind of PowerShell. WTF put it through virus total, and what do you know? Cozy Bear putting droppers in hacker movies now. I don't know who Cozy Bear is. Maybe just the uploader uh, on Pirate Bay. But um, yeah, make sure you guys watch out for that. Uh, here's what it looks like. Uh, don't illegally download movies. Right, guys? Uh, uh, don't illegally download movies. Uh, but this is kind of what it looked like. So this is from Pirate Bay here. Um, and it was by Straxis. Um, so I don't know who that is. Who knows? But um, this is looking at it. Uh, but it was, but yeah, this. I guess this is it. Uh, so avoid avoid that one. Avoid that hot title for the day. Okay, guys? You know, you mean, I know everybody's all about that. The girl in the spider's web, right? Everybody's trying to download it illegally but um don't do that not today wait for a different one or get it from a different user hell you might even get a re-upload from a different user so i would avoid that one entirely just don't do it anyway moving on to coin market cap 122 billion 120 billion oh we lost two billion since i refreshed god i love coin market cap you just refresh and you lose two billion on your investment not a big deal or anything right guys uh 60 so 36 Excuse me, had that backwards, a little, little, little bit of it backwards there. 36.25 Bitcoin, uh, everything in the red. So yesterday, everything was in the green. The day before that, everything was in the red. The day before that, everything was in the green. Uh, welcome to crypto, everybody. So nothing too crazy to report. Bitcoin dominance almost at 53%, so alts went up. And they're going back down, JR business style. Um, but uh, that's all I have for you guys today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video. That helps out a lot. Um, I also have social media in the description. Uh, my uh, Discord, Twitter, Twitch, Steam, all that good stuff. Follow those if you haven't already. Also, there's going to be a live podcast with Mr. Santco and friends. I have three guests that are going to be on the podcast on Friday. My channel is going to go live 2 p.m. Arizona time this Friday coming up. Um, and we're going to chat about crypto. We're going to like sort of interview each one. It's going to be pretty awesome. We've got some super guests coming and uh gonna be a an absolute blast it'll go on for about two hours uh so i hope to see you guys there and if you want to participate in that a little bit uh you can click on the discord link in the description join that discord and then check out the podcast uh channel within that discord and you'll be able to see um other people suggesting things so you could suggest things and uh, i'll take a look at that during the live stream during the podcast and I will, you know, evaluate people's questions or maybe their, you know, concerns or comments or anything like that. And, um, you know, if you have a good question or something like that, I'll ask every all the other guests on the podcast. So make sure you guys put something in there, your thoughts or whatever. But that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as usual, I will see you guys next time.